Bothering Boko. The island of Sodor was under a hot spell. The summer tourists didn't mind. They were bound for sandy beaches, shady forests, and scenic escapes. However, the steam engines felt put out. With fireboxes burning and boilers blistering in the sun, they grew cross and irritable. Boko, the diesel, didn't mind the heat. He loved the sunny weather and tried to cheer the others up. The steam engines liked and trusted Boko, which was more than they could say for most diesels. Unfortunately, this meant they often complained to him. It just never ends, James sighed dramatically. What never ends, quizzed Boko. My bad luck, fumed James. First, I get stuck with branch line work. Then, Bertie delays me at the station, out in the baking sun, no less. To top it off, I had to make up for lost time. I'm exhausted. You did well to get here so quickly, smiled Boko. A cool drink from the water tower is just what you need. Ha! sniffed James. That water's hardly cool when it boils in the sun all day. Boko didn't say anything more, but he had an odd feeling inside. Later, Boko brought passengers from Edwards Harbor to the big station. He saw Thomas shunting nearby. What a nice sunny day. Wouldn't you agree, Thomas? It wasn't very nice of the sun to bend my rails, grumbled Thomas. Now I'm stuck shunting rotten trucks until my branch line is repaired. Oh, 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 cried the trucks as Thomas bumped them fiercely. All day, the steam engines complained relentlessly. Boko tried to make them see the bright side but his sunny disposition soon clouded over. It all came to a head when he found Henry fuming at the platform. Playing relief engine, despicable. Donald's not ill. He just doesn't want to come out in this heat. I'm supposed to be resting. If you're so tired, snapped Boko, why don't you all just roll off to the scrapyard? The engines there would love to hear how you simply didn't want to work anymore when that's all they want the chance to do. Boko stormed off with his trucks, leaving Henry in stunned silence. Ridiculous, Boko muttered as he thundered down the line. Relentless moaning and groaning as if they're all so hard done by. If he hadn't been so cross, Boko might have noticed his cooling system was acting up. Suddenly, his engine coughed and spluttered. With a bang, Boko ground to a halt. Wisps of black smoke rising from his vents. That's torn it, said his driver. That's what you get for being cross. Now I'll have to call for help. Boko was feeling very sorry for himself when he heard a whistle. Henry had come to his rescue. I'm sorry, Henry, sighed Boko. What I said was horrid and... No, Henry cut in. I'm sorry. We all are. We shouldn't have pushed our problems onto you. You always show us the bright side. It's time we learn to see it. Now, let's get you to the works. When Boko returned, the steam engines greeted him with rapturous whistles and cheers. He was overjoyed 
and never let bad moods get the better of him again. The steam engines took a page from his book and stopped complaining. Well, most of them. Filthy, rotten trucks, muttered James. Why do I have to pull them? Flying along with a fast goods train is a splendid way to show off your red paint, Boko grinned. When presented like that, James was rather inclined to agree. Thomas and Mavis. The quarry on Thomas's branch line was busier than ever. There were plenty of orders for stone, which meant more trips down the line for Mavis. She was delighted. It was refreshing to leave the quarry. There were so many trucks that Percy couldn't take them all himself. The other engines sometimes took mixed trains to help him. Toby was used to this. Thomas complained bitterly. Why should my passengers have a bumpy ride because Percy can't manage another couple of trucks? It's more than a couple, I'll have you know, huffed Percy. Besides, those trucks are better behaved than ever. Thanks to Mavis. She could at least shunt them properly for us, grumbled Thomas. Her job is to manage the quarry, not your trains, chuckled Toby. You just want to laze around in the shed. Thomas spluttered, but Percy and Toby just laughed. The next morning, Mavis rumbled in with the trucks. As she shunted them to the siding, Thomas stirred. Morning, Thomas, she smiled. Fresh stone for you. <sighs> How wonderful, yawned Thomas. It's lovely coming down the tramway early in the morning, mused Mavis. I wonder when I'll get to see more of the line. Suddenly, Thomas had a cheeky idea. I was in your wheels once. I was stuck at the big station, but I wanted to see more. The fat controller saw how well I shunted the trains for the other engines, and he rewarded me with this branch line. He paused for effect. I think, continued Thomas, if you were to shunt trains, the fat controller would be quite pleased. A little initiative can take you a long way. Uh, down the line, that is. I have some time before I'm due back at the quarry, Mavis smiled. Perhaps I could shunt your train before I go. How's that for in it, uh, helping out? What a splendid idea, Mavis, remarked Thomas. Most kind of you. For several days afterwards, Mavis would shunt Thomas's trains after she brought the trucks down. At first, she was eager to help but balancing shunting with quarry work soon wore her down. This didn't bother Thomas. All he cared about were a few more minutes of shut-eye. One morning, Mavis fussed into Farquhar and found Percy waiting. Hello, Mavis. You do look tired. Never mind me, she huffed. Where's Thomas? helping at the big station for the morning. I'll be taking Annie and Clarabelle instead. Well, I'll have your train shunted as quickly as I can. Why would you shunt my train? quizzed Percy. Mavis explained her conversation with Thomas. Oh, that Thomas, scowled Percy. 
I knew he didn't like shunting, but I didn't think he'd stoop this low. You mean, shunting wasn't how Thomas got his branch line? Huh, if that were all it took, I'd have my own branch line too. You let him shunt his own trains from now on if he's so good at it. Mavis was fuming. She wanted to pay Thomas out. And that's when an idea struck her. Yes, Percy, she smirked. That's exactly what I'll do. The next morning, the sun rose over the sheds. Thomas was fast asleep, having a lovely dream. When suddenly, Thomas, Thomas, wake up! Thomas's eyes jolted open. His driver was frantically trying to get him started. Oh, what's wrong? He yawned. You overslept, scolded the driver, and now you're late. Thomas gasped. He looked at the station clock. Sure enough, it was almost time for him to leave. The passengers stood impatiently on the platform, with no coaches to board. Oh, where's that Mavis? He grumbled. There was no time to ponder that. Thomas hurriedly fetched the coaches and readied his train. He worked as fast as he could, but he was very late as he set off up the line. He was later still when he arrived at the big station. The passengers erupted from Annie and Clarabel. They had some choice words for the station master. Naturally, when the fat controller found out what happened, he had some choice words of his own for Thomas. The next morning, Mavis was surprised to find Thomas wide awake when she arrived at Farquhar. This is a surprise, she teased. Decided to shunt your own train for once? I'm sorry I tricked you, sighed Thomas. I certainly made a fool out of myself, didn't I? He paused and looked at his buffers. You've worked very hard the last few days. Much harder than I have. How would you like it if I worked at the quarry in your place for a while? Mavis was surprised. Oh, Thomas, do you mean it? Of course, smiled Thomas. There's no better way to see more of the line, after all. The fat controller made the arrangements with the quarry manager. Mavis was soon hard at work on the branch line. While Percy took Annie and Clarabelle, she handled the goods work. She reveled in her journeys to the junction and proved to be really useful. And Thomas? He worked at the quarry for quite some time. It was hard, dirty work, and the trucks put him through his paces. He was thankful when Mavis did come back. And when he returned to his shed, he felt his shut-eye was well-earned. Change of pace. Percy was banging crossly about the yard. It isn't fair, he grumbled to Toby. Oliver can't handle his trucks, so he gets the mail train? Some punishment. Well, being stuck in the yard is rather dull, replied Toby. Look who you're talking to, snorted Percy. Besides, Useful engines do the work they're given without fuss. I've been pulling coal trucks so long, I can't remember doing anything else. But I'm not complaining, am I? Certainly not, 
chuckled Toby sarcastically. But don't you fancy a change? <laughs> I don't need it. Unlike Oliver, I keep trucks under control. The coal trucks cackled. That's enough out of you, scolded Percy, giving them a bump. Toby was worried. He knew agitation only led to trouble. Something had to be done. The next morning, Percy woke to find a grimacing Toby. What's wrong? he asked. Oh, my boiler feels funny, groaned Toby. Must have had bad water. Will you take my passengers, please? But, protested Percy, I'm filthy. And what about my trucks? I'll take your trucks once drivers look me over. The passengers won't mind your paint. They just want to be on time. Huh, grunted Percy. Seems I keep getting every job except the ones I want. Useful engines do the work they're given without fuss, replied Toby slyly. Percy said no more. He fumed away, too grumpy to see Toby smiling to himself. Henrietta greeted him warmly. We've got milk for the junction this morning, she smiled. You mustn't forget Maurice. Not more trucks, Percy groaned. Fear not, chuckled Henrietta. You won't hear a peep from this one. Percy couldn't stay cross for long. The morning sun shone, and the passengers greeted him warmly. You look like you've been working hard, smiled Mrs. Kindly, pointing at Percy's dirty paint. Just like a proper engine. Percy smiled and set off up the line. With each wheel turn, he felt much happier. But Maurice, the milk tanker, began to grumble. Oi, Henrietta, who's this dirty little runt? he growled. Toby and Daisy at least have the decency to look nice before taking me out. That dirty little runt, replied Henrietta sternly, is the only reason you're not sitting in the yard while your milk turns sour. No more complaints, or the lorries will do your work instead. Maurice subsided at once. Percy had to laugh. They reached the junction in good time and the passengers were pleased. Percy was soon on his way back up the branch line. They were going well when... What's that? asked Henrietta. A figure was waving by the line side. Percy lit up when he recognized who it was. It's Tom Tipper, he beamed. Tom smiled gratefully as Percy drew to a halt. I'm glad to see you, Percy. Not leaving to mail behind to be a passenger engine, are you? Certainly not, Mr. Tipper. I've just been working other jobs around the yard. Glad to hear it. That Oliver's no replacement for you. He isn't? asked Percy. Silly engine took a detour last night, grumbled Tom. I've been rushing round to Ireland delivering his late mail, and now me poor van's knackered. Could you take me to the station for help? We'll have you there in a jiff, Percy grinned. Good as his word, Percy got Tom to the next station as quick as he could, and the station master phoned for Butch to fetch the mail van. Tom waved a thankful goodbye as Percy hurried on to the top station. Percy returned to the sheds that night feeling much better. Toby was waiting. Are you all right? asked Percy. Right as rain, smiled Toby. The problem fixed itself not long after you left, if you can believe it. You didn't! Shh, hushed Toby with a wink. Here comes the fat controller. Well, Percy, smiled Sir Topham Hatt. I've heard all about your day from the passengers and Mr. Tipper. I'm very proud of you. You're an adaptable engine. Percy blushed. I know you're tired of trucks, continued Sir Topham Hatt, 
And after Oliver's mishap, you both need cheering up. Before resuming your mail runs, you will both go to the harbor tomorrow for a special job. Oh, sir! Thank you, sir! Uh, uh, what is it, sir? You'll see, chuckled Sir Topham Hatt, as he turned and headed back to his car. What did I tell you? said Toby smugly. A change of pace can be a good thing. After the day he'd had, Percy was inclined to agree. Fat Controller's railway was busier than ever. The engines were rushed off their wheels with goods and passengers. Dirty trucks, dirty sidings, moaned James. Quit boiler aching, puffed Duck. Why, on the Great Western, that tin pot railway. Tin pot? Let me tell you. Silence, ordered a well known voice. Let me tell you, an engine from Scotland will arrive tomorrow to help with the goods work. Next morning, the fat controller was surprised to find two engines in the yard. Good day, he said. What are your numbers? Can I say, sir, said one. We lost them on the Wii, finished the other. What are your names? Donal and Doggy, sir. Good. I shall ask your controller which of you belongs here. He'll be no help to you, sir. We only gave ourselves names when we lost our numbers. One of you, rumbled the fat controller, is playing truant. I shall find out who and send him away. Soon, the twins were given new numbers. Donald was nine and Douglas ten. They went to work with Duck in the yard. They handled the coaches and trucks with ease. Duck was impressed. Take my tip, advised Duck. Watch out for Gordon, Henry, and James. They're sure to be trouble. That night, the twins backed into the shed and gave cheerful, deep-toned whistles to the others. They sound like buses, murmured Gordon. Or ships, smirked Henry. You wouldn't be making fun of us, would ye? Gordon and Henry jumped. Oh, no, no, no! Uh, certainly not! Mind you keep it that way. So Gordon and Henry did. The next day, Gordon arrived at the big station with the express. Duck was arranging Donald's goods trip so Douglas offered to shut the coaches away. As he did, he began to worry. I hope the fat controller doesn't find out I shouldn't be here, he thought. I couldn't abide going back. Gordon's Express has a special coach for passengers wanting to travel on Thomas's branch line. It must be shunted separate from the others for Thomas to collect. Douglas was so preoccupied, he forgot the special coach. As the twins were having a drink, Thomas came fussing. Where's my coach? What coach? The special coach Gordon brings for me. I must find it. Thomas was hardly out of sight when a mob of angry passengers erupted from the sidings, right out of the special coach. Losh sakes, cried Douglas. 
They'll complain to the fat controller. Listen, whispered his driver hastily. I've got a plan. Soon, the fat controller and the station master came strolling over. They were most surprised with what they found. Donald's tender sat uncoupled behind Douglas, who they thought was Donald. Meanwhile, Donald, with Douglas's tender, had left with the goods. Ah, number nine, said the fat controller. Why have you not taken the goods? Fault in my tender, sir, replied Douglas. Ducky took the goods while it's mended. I see, said the fat controller. And why did number ten leave so suddenly? Perhaps, sir, said Douglas. He saw you coming and thought he was late. At that moment, Percy came puffing up. Douglas, where would you like my stone trucks? Percy had meant to say Donald, but he'd forgotten which number belonged to which twin. Just leave them there, replied Douglas, absent-mindedly. I'll... Douglas! thundered the fat controller. Both engines went pale. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender? S sir I... I see what's happened here, interrupted the fat controller. He turned to the station master. Please tend to the passengers. I shall handle this. Douglas? When did you become number nine? That will be all, Percy, finished the fat controller. Off you go. Percy scampered away as quickly as he could. Douglas was left in no doubt as to what the fat controller thought of the trick. And suffice to say, his worries only worsened. <laughs>